This is The Worthiest Podcast, the show that reminds you that you're not broken and you're not alone. I'm Molly Shar, and today we're talking about trauma. So I want to start out by saying that trauma is an incredibly complex topic, and I am not a doctor or a therapist. So I am talking to you about the subject from my personal experience and what I've learned as a result of seeking to understand trauma better. So the first thing to understand is that trauma is not the thing that happened, but the emotions it causes, the way we experience the thing. It's subjective. People experience events differently. For one person, it might be traumatic, and for another, not. Something that I've had to work on myself is in not comparing trauma. That's an easy one to fall into. I spent years thinking my trauma didn't count because it seemed so small in comparison to what others endured. Friends, this is not helpful thinking. It doesn't help you understand yourself better or heal from your experiences. I really don't recommend minimizing your feelings because you see greater suffering around you. We often hear trauma referred to as big T trauma and little t trauma, but this is somewhat misleading and simplistic. What is commonly referred to as big T trauma is type 1 trauma. It's what we think of when there's an event that happens once and out of the blue, like being a victim or witness to a violent assault, a natural disaster, a car accident. Type 2 trauma is complex, repetitive trauma often experienced when we're children and when we feel trapped. Type 2 trauma includes things like experiencing physical, emotional, verbal, or sexual abuse, emotional neglect, and bullying. There's also intergenerational trauma, which is also known as historical or collective trauma, This refers to the passing down of suffering and adaptive coping patterns of different communities and cultural groups. This includes things like systemic racism, poverty, and war. Trauma has the ability to actually change the genes we pass down, in addition to passing down coping mechanisms and contagious emotions. What's referred to as little t trauma are traumatic experiences we have as part of everyday life. Things like losing a job or moving to a new city. It's important here though to recognize that these can be very traumatic experiences. So don't dismiss them because they fall into the little t category. And finally, it's possible to have secondary trauma where you're experiencing trauma vicariously when speaking with someone who has themselves experienced the primary trauma. This is all to say that sometimes we think there's some definitive list of what's truly traumatic, and that's really not the way it works. Trauma shapes us. It changes the way we experience the world. This is why asking the question, What happened to you can help us understand why we are the way we are, why we act the way we do. The younger we are when we experience trauma, the more affected we are. That can seem counterintuitive because we think of babies and toddlers and little children as not understanding what's going on around them, but children are continuously logging experiences into their brain as it develops. You might be familiar with the Adverse Childhood Experiences, ACE, score. It tallies different types of abuse, neglect, and other adverse childhood experiences that are potentially traumatic. Scores are not predictions, but higher scores do indicate a higher risk for health problems later in life. The 10 questions in the ACE quiz ask about things that happened before your 18th birthday including experiencing or witnessing violence, abuse, or neglect, and things that can undermine a child's sense of safety, stability, and bonding, like growing up with separated or divorced parents, 
household members being incarcerated or suffering with mental health or substance use problems. According to the U.S. CDC, more than 60% of adults report at least one type of ACE, and more than 15% experienced four or more ACEs, with women and people of color at greatest risk of being in that latter category. It's important to note here that adverse childhood experiences can be traumatic, but aren't so by definition, and they don't take into account other factors like stressors outside the household, protective factors like supportive relationships that help build resilience, and individual differences. I'm going to drop a link into the show notes to more information from the CDC about ACEs, including more information about the consequences of ACEs and what can be done to prevent them. So childhood trauma is far more common and far more impactful than we might have guessed. And regardless of your age, traumatic memories get lodged in your brain. When a traumatic memory is triggered, we go straight into a sensitized stress response before we can logically process what's happening. This is because our stress responses are there to keep us safe. They are our survival systems. Research has shown that being reminded of trauma can feel nearly as horrifying as experiencing the traumatic event itself. We often hear about fight or flight responses when we're in trauma and our survival instincts kick in. If something terrible is happening, we will want to flee or take flight. If we cannot do that, we'll fight. If we cannot do that, we'll freeze, play dead like a possum. If that doesn't work, we'll go into collapse, submit, where we might go numb through the experience, or we might please and appease in order to survive. These ways of coping shape us. They follow us around as we get older and live under entirely different circumstances. Untreated trauma can have long-lasting effects, affecting our mood and ability to regulate emotions and show up in behaviors like isolating, impulsiveness, compulsion, numbness, callousness, and eating disorders, physical symptoms like chronic illnesses, insomnia, and poor concentration, and seemingly disconnected emotions like anger, anxiety, depression, emotional outbursts, panic attacks, and unresponsiveness. So when we say, you're not broken, this is part of what we're talking about here. You learn to adapt your behavior and picked up coping mechanisms to get through. They got you from there to here. And some of them are no longer needed. Some of them are no longer serving you. Some of them are not healthy. But they don't mean that you're broken or that you're defective. This is some of the most important important work I've done is being able to look at myself with compassion. All those parts of me that felt broken or bad, to feel not critical, but understanding of how I adapted to what was happening to me. That was the beginning of being able to let those adaptations and those coping mechanisms go to quiet the voice of my inner critic. Friends, Shifting the question from what's wrong with me to what happened to me can unlock your self-compassion. Be gentle with yourself. And please, please seek out support if you need it. Trauma can be treated, and trauma-informed approaches to care are out there. I'll be back next week with another episode. Until then. I'm Molly Shar, and this is The Worthiest Podcast.